Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us. My name is RJ Witherow, and I'm the events manager here at Parnassus Books. Tonight, we are so excited to bring you award-winning author Kip Wilson for her new book, The Most Dazzling Girl in Berlin. That is this month, uh, April's uh, Parnassus Next Selection, so we're extra excited. And that also means we do have signed copies available. If you want to buy a signed copy of the book, the link for that is in the YouTube description or the Facebook comments. Uh, tonight, Kip is also taking questions from the audience, so feel free to leave those in the YouTube comments or the Facebook chat for a chance of having them answered during tonight's program. Kip is joined tonight by uh, author and translator Nita Tyndall, so we're extra excited, and I am pleased to turn it over now to Kip and Nita. <laughs> oh, sorry. Ah, you're good. <laughs> I thought using my mouse would make it better than the touchpad, but it was harder. So <laughs> hello, everyone. And hello, Nita. And I have to begin by saying thank you a billion and a billion gazillion times to Nita coming here all the way from Austria at the moment. So it is 1 a.m. in the morning. Thank you. I cannot even begin. You're to thank so you. welcome. Kip, there are very few people I would uh, be up at 1am for, and you are absolutely one of them. So oh. I'm so glad we get to do this together. I'm just, I'm so excited to actually like get to talk with you about our books and about your book, especially. And just, oh, it's going to be so good. And and everybody can notice behind me, I can point to, so those are our three books that are out now. Um, Nita has a new book coming out this Fourth fall, year. which is this one, which I don't have a that kind of yes. copy with me but it i have read it and oh my gosh is it amazing and so i have to tell everybody right now to begin with that um if you read and like the most i have another copy haha -ha, the most dazzling girl in berlin you will totally love ah, you will love nothing sung and nothing spoken which also takes place in berlin beginning in the 1930s so yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in and kind of talk. Let's, you know what, let's talk about Berlin in the and kind of the historical backdrop for um your book for both of our books, but especially for, for your books. book. Yeah. yeah. Um so I have something that's kind of in between both we can do a little show and tell something in between both of our books eras is i i did you get something like this at some point so if they're know. available online as well like these old maps um this one is 1935 so my book takes place in 1932 and yours begins in 38 right yep yeah so this is like right in between but it's what i loved about this upside down <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> upside down backwards and all that but whatever it is it's um i don't know i just like to be able to like look at it in person and hold it and you know um it uh to compare that to you know street names are different today and of course so many things are different but you know even going to berlin like both you and i did for research for our books it's wonderful because you can see some some things and you get a lot of I mean, I certainly felt that sense of like this absolutely where things happen. But you know, it isn't the same as like, you know, if we had a time machine, perhaps yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not for mine. Maybe not. No, I wouldn't know. 1938. Yeah. <laughs> Berlin. Like, yes, rescue people. <laughs> that is all. <laughs> yeah. But in 32, that's, you know, that is it's uh, that's partially I mean, that's the main reason why I wrote this book at that time was for me, I wanted to write about that before, um, mm -hmm. before things got um, bad at all. I mean, yes, it's it's yeah. not like this is all sunshine and roses and unicorns, although there there is certainly a good amount of those things. <laughs> but um, it, there are those dark clouds still that you know something's mm -hmm. coming. And then, of course, with your book, same even more and um yeah. but also still unicorns and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah what i loved about yours is that because i think you know there's there's so much world war ii literature especially in world war ii literature about germany and i loved with yours getting to see that the the, the berlin that was before um that or right when that that terror was actually it you did this so well it's like again like you said it's not always um sunshine and rainbows and there's definitely still really good things happening in your book but like that sense of terror especially as a reader knowing what's coming 
And mm. being able to read that and look at it and knowing that the characters have like a small inkling of what's about to happen, but not quite, but still getting to see like that joy and that community, especially that they found during all of that. And before all of that was just so cool to read and so good. Um, yeah. yeah, for me too, that was, it was really nice to be able to dive into this time and be able to, you know, uh, and I, I guess I, it's hard to say this about now without making the comparison to now, right? That there, are, I, it feels so parallel in many ways to now that, you know, um, the whole LGBTQ community now has like a good amount of freedom in some places, not everywhere, certainly, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it, it has like Berlin at that time was a Mecca and was this like, happy wonderful place with a lot of uh good things going on and this sense of community whereas where some places do have that now still mm -hmm. and yet you do now have that sense of foreboding i mean we see we're seeing these laws getting passed and books getting banned and just bad things on the horizon that we hope will get yeah. quashed right and so i and that's exactly what what these people were going through um and it's it feels kind of more eerie every day in a way. Yeah, I, def I know because you and I were definitely uh, research buddies. <laughs> we went back and forth and talked about our research a lot when we were drafting our books. And for me too, it was just such an experience to be doing because I started drafting. We sold the book in July of 2020 and I started drafting it. I had done research before that, but we started drafting heavily in 2020. <laughs> mm. uh, working, on, working on a book about World War II Germany in the middle of... Uh, 2020 with the right. pandemic and then the election coming up as well mm -hmm. in the u.s um i i don't know if you also experienced this but just like the parallel like doing this research and seeing the parallels at the same time yeah, literally while it was happening was oh mm, yeah, yeah. It was indescribable and that's right yeah. yeah and um you know it's it is nice at least to to look back and see focusing on some of the happy things <laughs> um you know i i'll show show and tell a little more um some of the cool books that this book is this kind of um kennen sie berlin do you know berlin Conocez <laughs> berlin all these languages berlin and this is a guide but this this i got from a, a used bookstore in Berlin, they they sent it to me because I I wanted it, um, and it was <laughs> this is actually from 1929. It's just it's it smells. Does it smell like, like it? <laughs> yeah. And and it's just got such cool things. I mean, it's 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 got these you know um, different places you can go to have cafe and uh, you know different. Um, uh, um places you can go to all kinds of um sites you want to go see the zoologica garden and uh it's just amazing and then um these other ones i have new versions of but this is um another so Ooh. right around my era um mm -hmm. and then this one walking in berlin um, oh, I, is also, I got this one um uh, i found this one in in boston it's a <laughs> <laughs> at a bookstore in Boston. I, I had heard of it, but I never, um, Frank Hessel is this author of these, but looking at the, these lists, like a lot of the establishments that were in my, in, I think for you, in your book, a lot of them were, were shut down. You had, you had slightly different mm -hmm. um, venues than what I had at my, in 1932. Cause basically mm -hmm. I think in 1933, there was a fouge of let's shut all these places down. Yep. Um, and then, you know, some places still existed as, you know, a dance hall or whatever, but not as specifically right. like a queer dance hall or whatever. Right. So. Yeah. You definitely had like the, um, what is now the Delphi Film Palace um, by the zoo. So the Delphi Film, the movie theater, um, what was back then, the Delphi Tense Palace. Um, so the, it, it that's was a what's dance in, hall in your book, mm -hmm. right? Yep, that's in mine. Yes. Yep. Yep, I stopped by and took photos of it last time I was in Berlin, which was just surreal that it is still standing and still a, um, and is now a movie hall instead of a dance hall. Right. Uh, but still. But a lot of it, a lot of it too moved underground as well, especially because you couldn't be that open, even with regular dance halls anymore. Um, yeah, right. And, and the same music the history, history. especially. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, for mine, um, 
my cafe Lila, where mine takes place, is fictional. Um, and th the reason for that, I think, because I looked, you know, there are all these places listed in, you know, like there were really literally hundreds of in all different kinds, you know. So there would be ones like um, uh, the El Dorado, for instance, was um, the, the, the <laughs> and I don't know if you went to this part of town, but when you were uh, there visiting, but that where it, it used to be the El Dorado, because it was a super famous mm -hmm. big club. Um, and um, that one is now a, a grocery store, <laughs> but it still says El Dorado, <laughs> El Dorado grocery. <laughs> I don't know, just kind of odd, I, but. <laughs> I did but, not see uh, that, but I'm going back to Berlin in a couple months, and oh, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have nice. to go look for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there were some others, you know. There were, and I have this other book which I didn't bring here because uh, it's kind of too big. <laughs> it's in the other room, but it 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 actually divided them up. Um, the different clubs by like, okay, these were the lesbian clubs, and these were mm -hmm. the, and, and you know, some. I mean, I, there was all variety of, including like mixed or like some were you know were where tourists basically were welcome <laughs> and others that were mm -hmm. really more like almost like what you'd call a speakeasy here that mm -hmm. you know you had to like know no kind of know the password almost or <laughs> not exactly but you know that sort of thing um mm -hmm. be on the guest list you know and i had to yeah one of the ones that hilda goes to um that was a real club and um that was oh, it nice. was like that yeah so, um, but, but Cafe Lila, the reason I made it up, <laughs> mm -hmm. because I kind of made it as a kind of conglomeration from a lot mm -hmm. of these other ones was because of just, I, I felt like if I was going to use a real one, I had, to, and because mine was really, I mean, she went there every day and it was such a mm -hmm. big part of the book right. that um, it would have had, I would have had to put all the other parts of the club, like the, mm -hmm. who was the owner and who I like that would have had to be true as well. And yeah. I just couldn't make it quite work the way I wanted to. So I, I like looked at a few of them and I tried like Molly and Eagle, for instance, which was a very, very popular um, lesbian club. Um, mm -hmm. I, I thought about that, but then I, I kind of also really loved Emil who is a gay man who is the owner mm -hmm. of Cafe Lila. And that wouldn't have worked out if it were Molly and Eagle because it was run by these two women. Um, so, you know, all these different things. That, and I finally, you know, that's why I like Cafe Lila is Cafe Lila. And it's based on a lot of bits and pieces from other places. Mm -hmm. um, but and I, I love like, it and I wish it was real. <laughs> I do too. So I could go there. <laughs> I would love to go there too. I just really would. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it was I so I was able to pull because the thing is, there's not as much information about the swing union movement in Berlin as there is in Hamburg, because they were largely based out of Hamburg. So a lot of the information I found was mainly Hamburg based. So what I ended up doing was the few places that were mentioned for Berlin. So the Delphi Tanzmalast, the uh, Femina Ballhaus, um, mm. the bigger places, I, I pulled and used those for specific scenes. But for me, I wanted to show that contrast because there is such a there's a class there's a huge class difference one between the characters and two between the swing Jugend in general and working class youth of berlin um so the bigger named places are the places that like charlie goes with gelly who has money mm -hmm. versus like when she's going with renata or when she's going with their other friends um they're in basements they're not in like named cafes or That's dance right. halls because that was yeah. what they could afford to yeah. do and to go into so. Yeah, and I love that about your book too, that the way, you know, um, it, a lot of people were very poor at the time and mine, in mine too. I mean, Hilda is a, yeah. a poor orphan and I think having those kind of main characters is important for that time because you know, that's, there's a lot of, a lot of historical fiction does, you know, focus on like the fancy rich people who, because they get to do mm -hmm. cool things in these times, right? But. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you know, poor people existed, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Especially um, during that time, were probably much, much, much more plentiful. Um, so mm -hmm. I was, and especially with the way that Berlin is set up too, almost like the class divided between districts and between the different mm -hmm. musica as well. Um, it was True. just fascinating to look at from a historical perspective. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, what? Well, I yeah, you go. You go. <laughs> Sorry, no, I, you go I just want to make sure to look at my notes. I don't want to forget anything that we wanted to talk about. But go, you first. No, you go. No, you go ahead. I have. I also have your notes put up. So, 
Said, okay, well, um, I was just thinking about our girls again, like you have this kind of cast okay. of girls and I have this cast of girls and that's, and it's just, it's just so neat that, and, and I mean, these books are like so totally different, but they're also, it's just wonderful that there's these things that are, that are, um, you know, we, we, with these cast of characters, I think that they're, they're all very unique people too. Like I, your characters are like, they're, you know, each one of them is just, yeah, like a, a complete different slice of, of the time and the place mm -hmm. and like a unique person, like a fully real, you know how when you're making, I don't know about you, when I'm writing a first draft my characters are all kind of vanilla and one dimensional and, but yeah. like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. just reading these full, re fully realized people um, and so different, I think that was just, it really, um, brings a book to a different level than when there's a cast like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. From, I, I love, oh my God, I love that about yours. I love literally everybody in yours as well. I love how you show these different experiences and different arrays of queerness as well among all of your characters. Mm -hmm. um, which is just, as, as a queer reader, for me, it was just like so cool to read and so cool to see, especially in historical fiction. It was just so nice. I love all your characters. It's so fun to me, like reading yours and how I'm, mine and you have also read mine no thinking like okay which one of our characters would get along I <laughs> which know. one of them would just absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i think charlie and uh hilda would, would be friends i for think sure. they would definitely yeah <laughs> and oh i see some in interesting questions on the side actually are one just oh. now are both of your books for young adults saying yes definitely um and that is not to say that adults would not enjoy them <laughs> but um are we both right for teens um so um yeah i think probably but i think we're what are we 12 ages 12 and up i think um i'm 14 and up i think <laughs> um or that's what the like sales thing says <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah why um, whatever you call it whichever it is <laughs> yeah do you, and then there's another one too, since we're getting into talking about research, which is do you do the bulk of your research prior to drafting or after first draft or editing? Um, I will let you go first on oh. answering that one. So let's see, I, I, I definitely have to do some of it first because I have to have an idea, like the basics, um, just, you know, to have an idea of the, of the time and the place. And um, this is the only, book of mine where, where I have like really, you know, fictional characters, but the other two books, like the other thing that's super important is that the actual person <laughs> um, have an idea, read a couple biographies first, at least to have an idea before I can start to draft. But I do like to draft pretty soon, like probably mm -hmm. earlier than most historical fiction authors, but that doesn't mean I'm like done. <laughs> like I'll just start to draft to like get to know the characters and to get to know what I want to do with the story. And then obviously I like in this particular book, this book I started in 2013. So it's been nine years and Jeez. it has changed a lot. Um, um let's see I, I uh it originally had t two point of view characters instead of now it's just hilda um and it um was in prose instead of verse and what? you know <laughs> yes this, so this i did used to write everything in prose and that's why i was never published <laughs> because I do not write well in prose. Um, and I've looked, gone back and looked at something and just, oh, oh, it's so terrible. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was a learning experience. I wrote lots of books in prose and, and realized that it was very hard and I was not very good at it. Um, but, but then, you know, and, and another thing about writing in verse is that, you know, it wasn't like I could just like take what I had in prose and like break it up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah, it was a, a brand new blank page. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you know, uh, this, what happened, some of the things, yes. I mean, uh, most, many of the <laughs> you know, things came out, but the actual writing was all new. So. Yeah, so for me, it was uh, this book had a really weird journey. I started it in 2016 initially because I was trying to actually do it as a Fulbright grant, um, but I was trying to do it as a Fulbright research grant rather than um, wow. the, the teaching grant that I'm on. And I 
had just graduated college. I had an English major. I had one semester of German. I did not get that full right um, <laughs> uh, for probably a lot of reasons also that it's wicked competitive. Um, but I really wanted to keep working on the book. So I like worked on it a bit, but I was daunted by the amount of research. And at that time, my German was like an A1 level. It was like an elementary school. So like I was running into the problem where I couldn't read my sources. Mm. Um, so I kind of shelved the book and put it aside and I, I told who I was with her. So I had to work on that one anyway. And then when we were tossing around ideas for my second book, I sent Harper, a Harper Collins, a thriller, a contemporary thriller and uh, this one, the historical. And I was like, 90% sure they were going to buy the filler because it had 17K, it had a tighter plot. To me, it was more complete. And they were like, congrats for buying the historical. You have six months for a first draft. Here <laughs> you go to what your race Six months? Mm -hmm. oh. And I, I did ask for extensions on that yeah. initially because, um, it, because it was 2020. And I was like, hi, I'm writing about Nazi Germany in 2020. I can't mentally do this. Please give me an extension. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I had done some research prior to that. In 2018, I had taken a trip with my mom to Berlin. Um, we had gone to the Bundesarchiv and t checked out like a bunch of sources and stuff. And by the time we sold this book in 2020, I had a bachelor's in German. So my German was at a sufficient level where I could read all my primary sources finally. Um, and so then for me, it was all of a sudden this book that I had thought I was going to have a lot more time with, I did not. So I really had to dive in and do the research and the drafting almost simultaneously and send Kip a lot of questions um, <laughs> while I was doing the drafting and the research. Um, but for... And to be fair, I sent you lots of questions too, if you remember. <laughs> you did. It was a mutual, it was just mutual questions back and forth <laughs> about everything. Um, but so for me, I had to do a lot of the research, like... Um, at, while I was drafting and I would often just like put it in brackets in the first draft like look mm. up what this street name was in 1938 look up like where this U-Bahn stop goes for example right. um I got really tripped up on like clothing and food and everything yeah, um, it's so funny those details really it's like that's the thing for me too like oh what color were the police uniforms you know that sort of thing like oh <laughs> yeah I would say I would just get so tripped I think I spent I know I asked you so many questions and I got, I think I spent a good like week just researching the German school system mm -hmm. and researching. Oh, the, the apprenticeships and those. Oh God, yeah. that killed me. I'm so mad. I still to this day, I had more time with that detail. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but looking up, okay, what is the difference between a gymnasium, like an abitur degree and then the, 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 the slightly lower like diploma, like, mm -hmm. oh God, I spent so much time on that one. Mm -hmm. Um, but I loved it. I would do it again. I'm, I was joking during the process. I was like, I was texting my agent and I was like, Eric, if I ever say I want to write a historical again, just gently tell me no. And now I'm like, oh, I want to write a historical again. I want to do more research. Um, so. Oh, I see. Uh, Julie, I know which Julie that is. That's my Julie. RIP to the opening scene with Lena. Yes. And so um, that this is back how in probably 2013, Julie read a, a scene which no longer exists. So <laughs> what was the scene? Do you remember? Oh, yes, very much so. It was Lena running at the time, which I don't think that's anything like this at all anymore in the in the final book. But Lena um, wanted to. She wanted it. Just Gretchen became the one who 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 mm -hmm. wants to get a job in the films to be an actress. Mm -hmm. But it was Lena, and she was running for an interview. Uh, not what do you call audition? <laughs> and she was <laughs> late, and and you know she had to get the get the job to mm -hmm. get her sister fed and so on. And yeah, I remember that scene too. But. Hmm. Too bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's so speaking of, I remember just it made me laugh when I was reading yours how many of just similar like street names I recognized either from mine or from my own research or even like character names yeah. that we had the same because there are only right. so many German girls' names in the 1930s. That's right. We, yeah. We both have a Gretchen or a Greta um mm -hmm. in there, which I thought was which is very fun for us. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> And let's see, what is your favorite part of the writing process and the least favorite? Um, hmm. I think my, I can say my least favorite is, well, it's not really writing though, but it's the whole, um, like, um, um, 
like promo. <laughs> I love <laughs> this. I love this. I love talking with friends about book. But if it were just me too, like I get like really nervous and stuff. See, look how nervous I am. Be nice to me. <laughs> but, I will be very nice to you. <laughs> For me, it's um, weirdly it's it's first drafts. I'm not. It's always my least favorite. It's actually, I think at this point, it's first drafts on deadline. Um, oh, you see, that that's different though. Yeah, definitely deadlines. Also, yeah, that's 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 probably a least favorite for me too. When you have really fast turnaround. Um, but I do yeah. like drafting. I love drafting when it's like you have all the time. Which is you in the book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The fun irony is I do need that external deadline or else I won't actually finish the book. So mm. yeah, catch yeah. 22, but it's, it they got to get done. So. Hey, I was thinking one thing yes. I actually hadn't made a note of. Should I read a poem from the book? Yes, you should. Like, Absolutely, that? you should. Okay. Yes. All right. Go for it. All right. Well, I have one picked out that is one of my favorites. Like, it's not my absolute, absolute favorite because my absolute favorite is like too far in and I don't want to spoil anything for people. <laughs> You'll have to read the book to get to that point. But this is like a close second. Um, this is when Hilda is the main character and she, um, we're not very far in. So what I can just tell you 20, 20 page 23. <laughs> so it's pretty near the beginning. And she has just, you know, entered Cafe Lila. She is just released from the orphanage, you know, she's coming to look for a s s salvation. <laughs> like a, and she winds up in Cafe Lila, and this is what happens. A butterfly girl. I turn back toward the door, and in that very moment collide with a girl I tower over. Her perfectly quaffed bob, every bit as dark as mine, but the exact opposite in its perfection. Where are you off to, Liebchen? The party's this way. And she takes me by the hand, takes me under her wing, takes me to the bar, where she grabs a towel, runs it over my hair, hands me my first ever glass of champagne. Has anyone ever told you you're the spitting image of Louise Brooks? Those immense eyes and such a waifish look. She grabs my chin and grins. Now, what did you say your name was? It's Hildegard. Hilda, I mumble to hide my imperfect teeth. Her smile overwhelms, and I can barely squeak out a danka. I'm Rosa. She nods, this rose-colored butterfly. And before I can manage anything else, she plants a kiss on my cheek, tells me to enjoy the show, flits off. This evening is looking up. Oh, Rosa, my beloved. I love her so much. <laughs> I love her too. She's oh, such a wonderful girl. <laughs> a dazzling girl. <laughs> <laughs> so That's wonderful. That, one other thing I wanted to make sure to talk to you is about translation because both of our books, so I have just that oh. one line in there where she has a Danke. Oh, and Liebchen. So I have a couple of German words that, that pop up from time to time. Um, but I have to say that was like one of my favorite things about your book is the way it just comes through like um, just like that, like certain words here and there. But also mm -hmm. in, in your book, there's the, these wonderful bits of poems by um, Heine that um, that you translated, right? I did. Yes. Which um, I loved doing because I, I was not I was not satisfied with any of the translations I found for them originally. Um, Either they didn't rhyme and the original poems rhyme. So mm -hmm. the translations also had to rhyme. Or they felt very, there, there's some really good translations. There's Emma Lazarus did it, fantastic translations of Heine's work. Um, but a lot of them felt too archaic for what mm -hmm. I was trying to go for with this book. They were translated in the 1920s and 30s. So there are still a lot of these and thous in them, mm -hmm. weirdly enough. Um, and that was also not the vibe that I wanted. So mm -hmm. I um was like well i will do my own translations <laughs> um i've never translated poetry before so that was a real challenge for me i've only ever done prose they're so lovely thank you i had a lot of fun with my uh this one that is my absolute favorite it's it's not I mean, it's kind of a spoiler it's not always the longest poem in there but it's kind of kind of indefinite um in in a foreign land is i think the title and I had a lot of fun with that translation because it is such a heartbreaking poem and the context in which that poem ends up in the book is also extremely um, 
I'm sad because all my books are sad <laughs> at this point. Um, but I, I really enjoyed getting to look at the translation and getting to look at how to incorporate the German fully into this story. And for me, it was just such a treat to be able to do that and to be able to work with, with Heine's words because I find him an exquisite poet mm-hmm. as well. Um, and I'm very excited because there's, there's an extra copyright in the front of the book that says translation copyright. And it's Hindle, so now those are my translations as well, which is really cool. Yeah, so, that is a bonus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I'll continue to try to translate rhyming poetry after this. It is extremely difficult. Um, I can't. I, I've, ne- I've never tried, actually, myself. Like, I mean, other than like songs, which I guess, yeah, but not, not as, it's different. Yeah, songs it's, rhyme. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, oof, but rhyming poetry translation is cool. chapeau. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, we have, all right. Oh, oh wow. a couple new questions. Yes. Who is one character in your book you would like to spend a day with and what would you do? Oh, I know exactly for mine is, um, and, and it's funny that I'm not saying my main character, but I do love her and I would want to spend a day with her too. But my absolute favorite is, is, is Uta. I, I just love Uta so much. They are the, the pianist um, and musician and just all around wonderful person. And I would go and listen to and make music with them, I think. <laughs> Kip, I think if I could spend a day with anyone in your book, I think I would also spend a day with, with Uta, honestly. Mm-hmm. I love them so much. They're so wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I probably also would not go with my main character. I love Charlie. I love her so much. But I think Lenata is probably my favorite character that I've ever <laughs> written. So I think I, and she's so, she ends up being I so I love cool. Renata too. Mm-hmm. Her so much. So I would probably want to spend a day with her because she seems to know where all the cool queer stuff <laughs> is. Um, for sure. Awesome. All right. How, ooh, we have, these are good audience questions. Um, how do you plan a novel in verse? Do you list the poems first or start writing poems? Yeah, that's it. Um, I do a little bit of both. Like um, if I, um, sometimes I just know like, okay, I'm going to write this scene about this thing and I just kind of start going. Like if I, um, you know, going into the club and, you know, what would happen there. Um, but But sometimes, especially I think as I get, a little longer on and I, I know the characters a bit more I'll start to like actually I'll just I'll make out these lists just like that um where I'll, I'll say you know okay one poem where this happens and one with this and the, and you know some of it is I, I I used to be like a really like outline down to the whatever and I do do a very general outline with you know so the turning points and um you know the main you know, character growth arc sort of thing. But um, I do prefer to kind of just like list out all the things and like, you know, I have to have a scene where, you know, first kiss scene and whatever. And sometimes if I'm having a bad day or whatever, well, I can write a kiss and <laughs> make it better. <laughs> and so like, I do also sometimes write out of, even if I have my list and know I have to do these certain things, I can pick what I want. <laughs> so it's, nice that way that's actually i think in verse you have a lot more flexibility i think it's i found it very hard in prose to write out of order or to you know yeah i I don't personally write out of order um i know some prose authors do i am not one of them because for me i have to have all the emotional beats building Mm -hmm. um so i have to i have to know what the emotional beat is before the next scene and so i can't even if i know what my like climactic scene is going to be um I have to I still have to write to get there I can't just skip yeah. to it because then the, the whole flow feels off yeah of it. yeah that makes sense mm-hmm. yeah um, I just want to make sure we didn't forget anything else important that I had written down um, oh I see another question um, what is your favorite thing about your main character oh that's a good question favorite thing about the main character I think, um, you know, I, I do see myself in her, in like her um, anxiety <laughs> a bit. Like, I mean, she's, you know, uh, she's a stage fright is what she suffers from. And, and um, um, that is why I could not eat before coming here today because, 
I, I, I mean, this is fun and I love it, but I also get nervous. And she's, and that she too, she really loves singing, and she loves once she's there in front of the crowd. You know, it's good, but but like she's nervous before. You know, <laughs> I, yep, I get that. I get that. Deeply. And um, so she, for me, that that you know, having her do that, but then like sit and and be able to to succeed at it. I mean, yay her. <laughs> Oh God, I I know I I told you this already, but like Hill, I love Hilda so much, especially because I also have like a stage fright, especially when it comes to singing. Actually, so mm. I was just like Hilda, like uh, mm. like oh, I just wanted to really like, reach in and give her a hug and just be like, I know where you're coming from. I like this is totally relatable. I totally get this. Um, yeah, God, I love her so much. <laughs> um, I will go ahead and answer the only kid that's met my main character at this point. Um. I think, like you said, I, I I definitely put a lot of myself into Char into Charlie as well. Um, for me, it was a lot of that high school insecurity about like I very much was defined by the people around me, and like I didn't know what I wanted, so I was like very happy to go along with what everybody else wanted, which Charlie definitely does at the beginning mm -hmm. of the book. She very much looks to Gelly for all of her plans, all of her excitement, all because Gelly is the friend with all the ideas and like yep. the outgoing and bubbly one. Um, so but I, my favorite thing for charlie is that she she kind of finds over the course of the the book that she can do things on her own she is quite mm -hmm. capable of being able to take on and do things yes she on can. her own <laughs> i'm very proud of her for that yeah because <laughs> it took me way longer to realize capable <laughs> right yes. right i'm still trying to figure that out <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh I love this question. Can you share anything about your next projects? Um, I would love to. Um, my next book comes out next year, which is very fast for me. I had um, 2019 to 20, I had three years in between these, which was very nice because I need time for things. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I, I worked on the my next year's book um, all through the pandemic. And so I was really focused on it and it, um, on that much faster than anything I've worked on before, but I don't think it's sloppy. <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> I love it like as much or more than I just my next. So it's about Gerda Taro, who was a photojournalist um, who um, was the first female photojournalist killed on the front lines. Um, she was covering the Spanish Civil War, um, which is also um, I go to Spain a lot and I'm going again this year. I was supposed to go in 2020 to do some research, but um, I ended up doing a lot of um, armchair research, which also um, <laughs> is, oh, and, but oh, Gerda, I love her so much. Um, and um, yeah, you'll hear more about that um, next year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm, I don't well, know. Your next I thing love... is your book coming out and then are you, you have, um, uh, an anthology you're in too, right? Yes, yes, it's good things I actually can talk about. Um, <laughs> I have, an, yep, so I'm part of the Out There Anthology in Out June, there. which, which mm -hmm. is a sci-fi fantasy anthology with queer writers, which I am um, very excited to be part of because I refuse to stay in one genre, so I deeply enjoy getting <laughs> to write science fiction for this. And then in October, I have uh, Nothing Sung and Nothing Spoken coming out, which is um my queer book set in berlin so it's like a sister companion book to kip's book kind of mm -hmm. um about these four girls who are part of the swing yugen movement or the swing youth movement um which resisted the nazis through listening to what at the time was forbidden american and british jazz mm -hmm. music so it's very queer it's very gay i'm very in love with it it is sadder than my debut novel which is saying something yes um yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, which oh, means... recommend some books. Ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I actually brought a couple to, to share. Um, Go for it. So this was my favorite book last year. Um, Me, Moth by Amber McBride. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love this book. I just love it so much. It's um, everyone should read this book. It's in verse and it it's I, I just can't say anything about it because it's there's there's 
something very interesting that happens besides the fact that it is just beautiful, so gorgeously written. I mean, Amber is a is a true poet. Um, like, I love this book. And then um, another one that uh, just came out last month, I believe, Margarita Engel's latest. She <laughs> is so prolific and every single one of her books is better than the next. I don't know. I love her work. And Rima's Rebellion is a uh, historical uh, set in, in Cuba with uh, uh, about women's suffrage. And it's so amazing. I love Rima. And yay. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm cheating because I haven't fully finished this book, but I'm going to recommend it anyway because it comes out next week. But um, This Rebel Heart by Catherine Locke. <gasps> Ooh, which... I I have it on pre-order. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I am so excited. I also have it on pre-order. Apparently in Europe, there's already a paperback edition. So I have the paperback oh, on pre-order. That's so um, cool. I'm stoked. But it is, takes place in 1956 Budapest um, and is a fantasy novel following, um, I cannot pronounce this main character's first name. I think it's Chila. Is it Chila? 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 I wasn't sure either. So I will ask my Hungarian friend how to pronounce mm. it. Um, but it's and then Catherine does is one well, they are such a talented writer and it's also a fantasy novel as well in addition to being about the historical communist uprising in 1956 Hungary and I am I read the first chapter the other day when it was posted on whichever website it was yeah, posted on that I can't I remember at the moment but oh my god it's so good and so breathtaking and Catherine's writing is just I love their writing I love anything they write so I am mm -hmm. super excited for that one. Um, I have not been reading much young adult lately, as weirdly enough, but the last thing I read that I really enjoyed, which was actually not young adult, was um, Monster House by John Darnielle, which was a fun adult kind of crime-ish novel by the guy who is normally the lead singer of the Mountain Goats. Um, but I listened to it on audiobook and it was really weird and good. And I'm in the mood for really weird and good books right now. So Awesome. Always come for that. <laughs> well, I guess that um, that was our last question. So I guess we are done for the night. And Nita can finally <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> go right to bed and, instead of being up longer. Um, so worth it. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you, Parnassus Books, and thank you everybody for coming here today. Um, and um, have have yep. a have wonderful happy poetry month starting tomorrow yes thank you and happy trans day visibility um yes happy trans day visibility well. <laughs> be visible one day of the year yes that's right <laughs> <laughs> bye everybody thank